Hi, this is Mark Shipman Mueller with the next installment of the ARI Tech Talk. As always, we're recording with an ARI Alexa. We're recording on ProRes 422HQ in Rec 709, and we're getting wireless mic, uh, wireless audio from the little microphone here attached uh, to my shirt directly into a wireless receiver on the Alexa that's then recorded on the SPS Pro cards. Today I will be talking about the new software update, software update packet uh, 4.0. And we're going to do things a little different here. I'll first give you a brief overview of all the features, and then we'll delve into each um, of these features in detail. Now, software packet uh, 4.0 is a huge packet with lots and lots of features. And I have listed 17 features here. I had to write them down, 17 major new features. Um, and I'll briefly run you through those features. Starting with number one, we now have custom look files that allow you to apply a look to any uh, Rec. 709 or DCI P3 output on the Alexa. Number two, there is audio playback from the SPS Pro cards now. Previously, you've been able to record audio onto the card and play video back, but now you can play back audio and video. Number three, there's auto white balance. You can point the camera at a neutral gray chart or a white wall, push a button, and the camera will automatically white balance the uh, color temperature. Number four, we have a number of uh, uh, improvements to the viewfinder and the monitor out, starting with a peaking focus check that allows you to check much better uh, if you're in focus or not. Um, Number five, there's a false color exposure check now for Rec. 709, which we had previously, but also for Log C, which is new. Number six, the zooming in and the function in the viewfinder can zoom in on the center of the image, which in my case here would be my chest, which of course is not ideal. But you can also zoom in to the top part of the image, which would show you what the eyes are doing, which is great for focusing. Number seven, the zoom and the exposure button on the viewfinder are now toggle buttons, which means you push the button and then the feature stays. You push the button again and you're out of that feature. Number eight, we have a new feature that is a software license, and that is the anamorphic D-squeeze. This is something you actually have to pay some money for. Um, you'll download it from the internet, put the license on a card, put that in the camera, and then the camera has the ability to de-squeeze an image from an anamorphic lens either a 2x or a 1.3x anamorphic lens. Number nine, the camera is more quiet. We've changed some of the algorithms that govern the heat in the camera as well as the fan. We're allowing the camera now to get a little warmer, and we're running the fan a little slower. And as a result, the camera is quieter when it is specifically very hot. Number 10, the HTSDI record out flag now comes out even when you're not recording onto SPS Pro cards. So the SPS recording can be turned off, and you're still getting the HDSDI record flag. Number 11, we've re enabled the return video in connector, which is this guy here, right here. That allows you to actually see the image from some external video source on the monitor, on the monitor out, or on the electronic viewfinder. Moving on to number 12. We have the ability to compare the stored image on the SD card with a live image. Great for setting up product shots. Number 13, there's a hour counter now built into the Alexa that tells you how many hours the Alexa has been on. Those are all the features that works for Alexa as well as Alexa Plus. And then there are three more features just for the Alexa Plus. First, there's 3D lens sync. If you have an LDS lens, a lens data system lens, on a 3D rig, it allows both lenses to be set at exactly the same positions, focus, iris, and zoom. If you have a non-LDS lens, you can use the lens data archive to achieve essentially the same. Number 16, we have the lens data system information now available, visible on the electronic viewfinder and on the monitor out. And last, number 17, we have the lens data archive. If you have a lens that doesn't have the lens data system built in, you can choose that lens from a list. And as long as you use an ARRI motor, you have the same functionality as you would with a lens data system lens. That's it for the overview. And now let's look more into some of the details. All right, we'll start with the ARRI look files. ARRI look files are XML files that contain parameters that define the look. 
These looks can be applied to any of the outputs of the Alexa as long as the output is either REC 709 or DCI-P3. Now, in order to choose a look, I'll have to first create it. And there's a number of companies working on software packages that allow you to create a look. That'll come a little bit in the future. Once you have that, you take the look on the SD card that goes in the camera, and then you can choose one of the looks. And I'll do that by going into the color menu here. And here now I have a set look button. Once I push the set look button, I see all the available looks. And I'm choosing one that's labeled set, which means saturation. We have set it to a saturation zero, which is black and white. Now I'm loading this look. This look now is available. I see that look here. And now I can apply this to any of the outputs, the electronic viewfinder, the monitor out. And I'll do that right now. I'll apply that look to the monitor out. And lo and behold, on my monitor out image, it turns black and white. Now this does not affect right now the record out, the SBS card, or the electronic viewfinder. I've now chosen to apply this look specifically to the monitor out. And that's it for look files. The next feature is audio playback. Once you've recorded something with audio on the SBS Pro cards, you can play it back. And with Software Update Packet 4.0, you also get the audio back. Where does the audio come out? First of all, we have the headphones connector. So the audio, once I play back a card, can be heard on the headphones. It also comes out on the BNC connectors embedded in the HDSDI signal, either as video or on the ARRI RAW. The auto white balance allows you to balance the camera very quickly to any color temperature in the room. In order to auto white balance, I would go to the white balance button here, which seems logical enough. I push the white balance button. In the next screen, I now have the auto WB button as an auto white balance. Once I push that button, the viewfinder shows me what area of the screen should be white or neutral gray. Now I will tilt the camera to get some white in there. And now I'm going to push the auto white balance button again. The camera balances. And now we see a wonderful color, which in fact I can actually read off the display. Right now we have here 3800 degrees Kelvin and minus 2 cc's. And that's how the auto white balance works. The next feature is peaking. Peaking allows me to see in the viewfinder and on the monitor out if the image is in focus or not. It essentially is an um, edge enhancement that makes it clearly visible if I'm in focus or not. In order to turn peaking on, I go into the menus. What I've done here now is I've placed the peaking on off switch onto one of the user buttons. So I push the user button, and now on my user button one here, I have the peaking on off for the monitor out. I can also have a peaking on off for the viewfinder, and that's actually um, also in the menus. Now, in order to turn peaking on, I push this button. Peaking is on right now, and when I focus through, I can see relatively easily, boom, there I am in focus. And for comparison, I'm turning peaking off now. Again, I focus. Now the point where I'm completely in focus is a little more difficult to see. Again, for comparison, peaking on. Boom, there I am, right there in focus. And again, that's available on the monitor out and on the viewfinder of the Alexa. The next feature is something that you already know from Software Update 3.0, which is a false color exposure display. In 3.0, you were able to get this for Rec. 709 on the viewfinder and on the monitor out. However, if you had either one set to log C, it still showed you the values from Rec. 709. We've had some complaints, and we've changed it now. So now when you're looking at Rec. 709, we're measuring Rec. 709 and showing you false color mode for Rec. 709. And when you're looking at log C, we're showing you the false color for log C properly. I've set the monitor out here to log C right now. And again, I have used a user button. This is user button number two for my false color exposure mode. And when I turn false color exposure mode on, I can see the different colors showing me the different brightness levels of this image here. And again, this is log C. The same works, by the way, also if the monitor is set to Rec. 709. The monitor will properly show the exposure for Rec. 709, while the monitor out will show the proper exposure for log C, which is what I have set those two to right now. 
Next, we have a change to an existing feature. On the Alexa viewfinder, there are two buttons. The first one is labeled Zoom. The second one is labeled EXP. That stands for Exposure or False Color Exposure Check. And they used to function as follows. As long as I push the button, the feature is enabled. And when I let go, the feature is disabled. We've changed that now. And now it's a toggle function, which means when I push Zoom, the function is enabled. I am zoomed in. And when I push Zoom again, now the function is disabled. So you know that you're actually zoomed in. While you're zoomed in, there's a thick orange outline around the image. It's very, very clear. And then for the false color exposure check, I push the button. Now the false color exposure check is on, which is relatively visible because you see the different colors in the viewfinder. And then pushing the button again, false color is off. And that's the change to these, new to the, to these two buttons. Next, we have the first feature on the Alexa that is a software feature you can purchase. You can purchase it from us. Um, you can install the license on the SD card, put the SD card in the camera, and then enable the license. And then those features will become available. Now, the very first feature we're going to be selling that way is an anamorphic de-squeeze. Now, an amorphic de-squeeze is something you need um, when you shoot with anamorphic lenses. For testing purposes, we've dug out an old ultrascope from our rental house here. And you can see on the monitor that the image is squeezed by a factor of two. Now, once you have this anamorphic de-squeeze license installed in the camera, you can do the following. You can go into the menu. There you go to monitoring, monitor out. And then at the very bottom, it says anamorphic de-squeeze, which right now is turned off. So my image here is still squeezed. Now here, I can go to 2x de-squeeze, which gives me a very, very wide image. Now, the stuff on the left and on the right I usually don't want. So you have an extra option of zooming in. So you only see the 2.39 to 1 image that you would want for your CinemaScope feature film. We, of course, also support the 1.3x squeeze anamorphic lenses that are starting to become popular. And that's it for the anamorphic de-squeeze. Return in is a feature where we finally enabled this connector on the camera that is labeled ret slash sync in. Ret meaning return in. Now, what does this do? If I have a second camera, for instance, and I feed the signal from the second camera into my Alexa, I can, with a push of a button, and I've, put the, I've des uh, designated a user button right now, with a push of a button, I can switch between the live image, which I have here, and the image coming into the turn in, which right now is the showreel we're playing back from a playback machine. This allows me to switch between my live image and an image from some other source. It's great when I shoot interviews, and camera number one feeds its image into camera number two. And then the operator of camera number two can see his own image, but also the eye line of the other camera. And by the way, this works in standby, and it also works while you're recording. So while you're recording, you can quickly switch and see what the other person is doing. Um, as I've done here, you can assign a user button to switch between the two. And that works for the three user buttons on the, on the right side, as well as for the user buttons on the left side. Many of you remember a feature from the days when we all shot film that is called Store and Compare. That was a feature we had in the integrated video system. Um, the way it worked is you stored an image, held it in memory, and then compared it to the live image. The same function is now also available with the Alexa. The way it is being done, the way it is being activated, is through the menu. I push the menu button to get into the menu. And then here, I choose Frame Grabs. And then I choose Compare Grab to Live Image. Now, I've previously captured this um, picture here, but I've panned a little bit since then. So if I push the Compare button, I can now see my captured image in comparison to my live image. When I pan at some point, I will actually get right back to the point where I was when I captured the image. And this is a great feature if you're doing tabletop. You set up some shot, you grab an image, you go to lunch, you come back after lunch, and you can make sure you have exactly the same shot again. I'm sure you guys are going to think of many, many other features, uh, many, many other applications for this feature. And that's the store and compare feature on the Alexa. Another new feature we have is an operating time counter. 
in the info screen that I have, and I get there by pushing the info button, which is right here, I can see a number of uh, pieces of information about the camera. One of them is the system information, and the last line here is operating time. This tells me that this camera here has been on for 232 hours. This is a feature that's going to be great for you guys in rental.